Hi guys, uh, welcome or welcome back to my uh, YouTube channel where I'm making videos about sewing, fashion and design. I'm here today to get started with my uh, first project. I've never documented a project before, so hopefully uh, this video ends up somewhat entertaining or at least useful to some. So yeah, let's get started. So very quickly, uh, just to kind of show what I'm planning to work on is this uh, fabric right here. I did mention it in my previous video. It's a tie-dye uh, stretchy fabric that I have got uh, for a dress. I'm actually planning to make two dresses out of it, one for me and one for my niece. She's in Spain, um, so it's already kind of hot there and she's definitely ready for something like this. It's a bit colder where I am, um, but I need to ship it to her, so I want to just get it done. And I'm also not sure that I will have enough fabric for two dresses. I kind of eyeballed it in the store. So hopefully I'll have enough and I have my uh, pattern printed out and ready to go. So I'll show exactly what I'm using for that. And uh, yeah, ready. let's get so for my project, I typically use PDF patterns, so patterns that you can just print and um, piece together and use it for whatever you are making. Uh, this is the tank top uh, pattern that I was uh, planning to use, a size European 36, uh, which is, I believe, is like 2 or size 2 or size 4. And uh, yeah, so I'm just going to piece these uh, uh, sheets of uh, transparent paper together, cut it out and uh, lay out my textile and start cutting into that. So let's cut into this fabric. So what I'm doing right here is actually um, combining two patterns. I decided to uh, pull this dress pattern right here and combine it with the little uh, tank top pattern. They are very similar. So what I'm going to do is take the line here that marks the uh, waist and because I'm using transparent pattern, it's really easy to just match it with this line right here. That's also waistline on the, um, on the tank top. Because this is the same producer of the pattern, the same brand, it's very easy. You can tell how they just match right up. And pretty much use the rest as a guide to extend the kind of like a, the bottom portion of the dress. I don't really need to do it, um, honestly, like you can just extend this kind of curve and just make a straight line all the way to the bottom, but I have this dress pattern, um, which is pretty great. I already made it, so I know it's gonna look good um, at the bottom and I know how it fits, so I'm gonna use that. So what I'm also gonna do is extend the bottom of the dress by an inch and a half. So uh, here are my two pieces, uh, they are ready to go. So the next steps would be to put interfacing in a couple of the areas and I can base them together for kind of like a first try on. I do want to uh, try this dress with like temporary stitch just to see how it looks like on me if I need to adjust the size or the pattern 
or the neckline or anything at all and also decide if I do want to uh, do like a slit on the side on one of the side seams uh, something else uh, I do not have enough fabric for a second dress like I thought I'm looking at it I'm not even sure how on earth I thought that I could make two dresses but we'll see uh, so regardless I don't have uh, enough for a second dress but I do have plenty of fabric to uh, do something with it. So I'm gonna decide later if I want to go and get more fabric and finish uh, the dress or if I want to potentially come up with a new project and finish the dress for my niece but maybe not make a dress for myself but do something else. So I'm gonna see um, a little bit later. I want to finish this this dress first and see what I want to do with the rest of the leftover fabric um, later on. So here's how the dress looks like so far. Obviously it's not finished. It's not even gonna stay this way. I'm gonna have to uh, take it apart and um, making, you know, actually finishing it the correct way. This is just uh, temporarily pieced together so I can check for balance just to see the size, uh, make sure all the lines where I want them to be. And I'm pretty happy with the fit. I mean, it's pretty easy with stretchy dresses this way. Uh, even if the size is a bit off, it's pretty forgiven and it, it's very easy to fix but I'm pretty happy with this um, for me I do love the neckline so I'm gonna keep it the way it is the only difference is I probably will add a bit more into the seam allowance here just so I can end up with this exact type of neckline and um, kind of like a racer back like pattern if I uh, finish these edges obviously it will take a little bit away and they're gonna be even like kind of like smaller at the top but I just love the way it looks right now so uh, for my knees I think this is gonna be perfect if it's a bit smaller here but for me I do want it to end up looking exactly the way it is now I marked the slit for her for me looking at the dress I think I'm gonna keep it just like this uh, for the second dress I'll end up just leaving it without the slit um, length is pretty good again she is a bit shorter than me so I think this is gonna be perfect and it's not even hemmed yet so once I hem it it's gonna be a little bit shorter but for her I will keep it this exact length for me I'll think I think I'll add a couple inches to that because when I walk the dress kind of like tends to jump up jump up and just kind of like it goes up so um, so I can see like the ankles but not too much I think I'm gonna have to add an inch maybe even two inches to the bottom but yeah I do love it overall the uh, pattern is perfect the um, size looks really nice um, it's pretty opaque you can wear undergarment um, obviously uh, like a nude something nude um, promise like seamless kind of undergarments if you wear something that has seams you're gonna be able to see it but other than that this is like really opaque fabric so you can double the fabric if you want if that makes you feel a bit a bit more comfortable but um, you don't have to Pretty much ready to get going uh, the first things I'm going to do is obviously set up my sewing machines they are not set up yet so just uh, put the correct color thread in test a few swatches make sure everything uh, stitches correctly without any issues I uh, used a needle for jersey fabrics and for some reason it just wasn't happy like it was actually like a skipping uh, some stitches so I'm not sure what's up with that need to uh, test different needles to see if I can change that another goal of mine for this particular project to use my cover stitch machine that's actually uh, sitting right here under my table I've purchased that uh, many years ago and I don't know why it's not very complicated type of type of sewing machine and yet I'm just like intimidated by it for some reason or Sometimes I simply just cannot be bothered to pull it out just to do a ham. It's just like, so much easier just to do it a, the old school way with your surgery, with your regular sewing machine instead of uh, some fancy cover stitch and uh, doing all the setup just to do like one ham or something. So I'm gonna, um, but I wanna start using it because I have it. Otherwise I need to get rid of it and maybe like sell it or something. But 
I'm gonna do that too and uh, yeah I'm just gonna see if I actually need that machine because so far it's been sitting under my table and I've been sewing a lot so we'll see Uh, so, here I am in day number two. The good news are that I did finish the dress. The not so good news are that I didn't like how it turned out. Uh, the dress is, uh, itself is fine. I really didn't like how my cover stitch machine as well as my serger actually finished uh, the edges. I did not like how they handled the fabric. And um, the truth is, if it would be dress for me, I probably would just leave it alone and move on to the next project. But this is not for me, this is for um, somebody I'm sending it to, so I want to make sure it actually turns out, if, if not perfect, close to perfect. I actually had to switch each a single thread uh, into a different color to figure out how which specific um, thread, is it like the upper looper, the... Um, the bottom looper or any other ones I pretty much had to change the settings on all four threads to get the right kind of uh, stitching out of it for this particular fabric so the side seams of the dress are ready the next three pieces I have here are the trim that we'll use to finish up the uh, neckline as well as the armhole opening so I just need to stitch them together and attach them uh, to the main dress done my surgery did okay uh, I played around with it enough where it's decent uh, so the next step I do need to iron them and press them with a the steam because uh, they will be going on the inside and I want them to be as thin as possible and just like overall to get the um, any kind of like a wrinkly uh, parts out uh, so I um, have my iron ready to go and yeah. next step is to uh, baste my trim uh, from the inside so I can go to my cover stitch machine and uh, finish it on the right side. So I do have to baste it with two uh, stitches, one at the top to kind of um, fold it nicely because when you uh, cover stitch it later this tends to be kind of like move around a little bit so in order for it to kind of like stay all nice like this way I do have to put a couple uh, stitches in here so I got my threads and I'll get going So here is my basting uh, ready to go. So this is going to be my guide for um, for my cover stitch uh, machine. So here is my scary looking cover stitch machine. It's uh, Janome, as you can tell, the 900 CPX. It's the three thread model, the cheapest one, the uh, most basic one, uh, just like a few uh, stitches that it has. And I already tested. A little piece here as you can see um, looks pretty nice it has uh, a little bit of a dark uh, here's my guide um, kind of like to make sure I did do it correctly on my uh, dress so yeah So here is how my stitch looks like. It's not the best. I'm not thrilled about it. I'm not gonna redo it, however. It's just gonna have to stay the way it is. 
the next step for me would be to uh, remove this kind of like stitch guide, uh, this basting and uh, press all the seams with iron just to give it a little bit of heat and the dress is ready to go. So here is my little dress sitting right there. I'm done with it. I'm so freaking happy to be moving on to something else. Well, not really. It's going to be another dress. And uh, here is what I'll be making. So here are my kind of like plan for the next a dress so I'm gonna be using the same exact uh, pattern of the tank top but what I did is actually drew um, this kind of like my own two-piece pattern so I'm gonna have to cut one out and then just like cut the next one apart so separate the top and the bottom and what I'm going to do is uh, to use the top uh, piece of this pattern and double it up uh, with my fabric so it's a bit thicker so I like I mentioned before don't have to wear any bra with it and the bottom of it is gonna be in here and um, then once I kind of like uh, layer them together I'll attach it to the back um, the back is going to be just one piece, exactly the same as my uh, first dress, no changes at all. Before, I haven't done this kind of project um, in the past, not with this pattern, not with any other pattern, so it's going to be a little bit of a figuring out for me how to piece them together the best way possible. Um, just kind of gonna play around. I also a bit nervous about this whole like a cutout situation because without seeing it previously in any sample you don't know if this cut out exactly where you want it to be. I kind of just eyeballed it uh, paper pattern kind of like put it on myself and um, just try to see where it would kind of like exactly fall on my waistline like kind of like above the waist but yeah it's the best way ideally you want to make a um, sample and kind of like see if they cut out exactly where you want it to be but I'm too lazy I'm just gonna like do it and see how it works out if it doesn't look good I mean then I'm gonna show you the crappy dress that it will end up looking but if it does look good then um, I guess the future will tell us so let's get started let's cut into the fabric and I honestly just want to get done with it today because I'm kind of tired of snaring on this beautiful sky blue purpley fabric but I'm just kind of like over it and want to move on to the next project so yeah let's cut into it So I have decided to uh, put the pieces together before finishing them completely after all. Um, I really want to see how this cutout looks like before I put any more work into it. So uh, set up my sewing machine to a stitch length of five. Five is like the longest, uh, I don't know if it's millimeters or what, but it's like the longest uh, stitch that my machine has. And I could also done it uh, just by hands, but I'm too lazy, I would rather do it on my uh, sewing machine and this is going to be my temporary stitch just to see, just to try out the uh, dress and see if I do like 
kind of like everything, the length, everything else. So that way I can just like go ahead and finish it and not worry about how it looks like later and um, doing undoing any stitches that are like more permanent. So yeah. So here's what I have. I did uh, put it together. I like it. I like the length. Uh, that's one thing that I kind of uh, guessed pretty, pretty well. Um, the length is perfect. Not doing, not doing any changes there. Uh, the cutouts. The cutouts is interesting. <laughs> I like it, but I don't love it. Uh, the top piece, so the top pattern, definitely needs to be. Um, a little bit longer, maybe like a half an inch or so, just just a little bit longer for, for the seam allowance. Like I already added quite a bit as a seam allowance uh, when I was kind of like eyeballing the pattern, but now that I, you know, it's on me and it kind of like uh, hugs whatever curves I've got, it's definitely need just a little bit more for the seam allowance, so I would be adding that. And the bottom, the bottom is fine, the bottom is perfect, uh, the only thing I probably would maybe end up bringing it a bit higher up uh, just to make this cut out just a bit less. Um, uh, honestly, I'm just not quite sure if I even want this cut out at all. The idea behind making it was uh, just to add a little bit more detail to the dress so it's not kind of just like your straight up plain boring tank top uh, kind of dress. The previous dress had a slit on the side and that kind of added Kind of like something something to it uh this one doesn't have a slit i really love it more without the slit for myself i don't know i just i don't want to be worrying about my white <laughs> white legs in summer and just kind of like feel a bit more um secure this way uh but yeah i'm really not sure about the cutouts it uh, the dress is fine it still looks kind of cute with the cutout it's just it's just my look like a bit more like junior clothing my like just a bit too juvenile for me to be honest it's I'm not sure if an adult woman would wear a cut out like this even though I do have a lot of uh tank tops that are cropped and I wear uh like my belly practically like naked all the time in summer so it's not like completely against my style it's actually not at all it's exactly my style it's sporty but like feminine uh exactly what I like However, I'm not quite sure about this cutout. I do have enough fabric to cut this piece and I think what I'm gonna do is just wait for my husband to get home and he is usually really good at providing this kind of um, advice. He sees, he likes simple things. I know he's gonna say, oh, I'll remove the cutout, I don't like it. But um, yeah, I really just need to kind of decide if I like it or keep it or leave it or I'm not sure yeah we'll see so just to show the process a little bit here is the top piece um, finished so pretty much two um, two pieces combined together they're gonna be they're gonna look the same on both sides and I just kind of like wrapped I made this inside pattern uh, shorter, so I used the one that I already had and cut a new one with additional uh, seam allowance so I can uh, make a nice edge and my cover stitch really liked doubling on the fabric, I guess tripling, so there are three layers when I did it because I did it very well compared to when it's just two layers. So for the bottom uh, part, so for the skirt part, I do need to reinforce uh, this edge. Um, if I just leave it the way it is and just kind of like fold it and finish it uh, this way, it's not going to be enough. It's going to be too flimsy. Uh, I wanted to kind of reinforce it just a little bit um, with, so with a little piece of kind of like tape. It's not, it's not cotton bias. It's just a strip, a strip, a little piece of fabric. And I'm going to attach it on my serger along the line and uh, then cut kind of like closer to the edge and then I will fold it. So this will provide kind of like a bit of reinforcement, kind of like what elastic would do when you um, working with like maybe like a swimsuit or a sports bra, like if you have any open 
edges like this you want to reinforce them with some kind of elastic or in our case like just a little bias tape um, so this is not too flimsy so. Thank you.